Now, monohybrid inheritance uh, is a terminology that is founded uh, from the first law, which is the law of segregation. And uh, this particular concept says that each particular trait is inherited independently of the other trait. For example, if you are looking at how a trait such as tallness is inherited, then you should just narrow down to tallness and not relate that with another trait, maybe such as the skin color or such as sex or such a, as another trait as, as may be. So uh, this concept is borrowed from the law of segregation which stated that uh, uh, the, uh, the characteristics of an organism or each characteristic in an organism is determined by a pair of hereditary factors and only each one of those factors exist in a gamete. So the monohybrid inheritance explains that each characteristic is inherited independent of another. Each characteristic explains that each characteristic is inherited independent of another. For example, tallness has no relationship with skin color. in terms of how they are inherited. In terms of how they are inherited. Now, <clears throat> uh, I would like us to uh, look at some of the experiments that were carried out uh, by Mendel. And for example, we look at uh, examples of Mendel's experiments. Uh, for example, uh, where he took some tall plants, that is the garden pea, and crossed them with other tall plants obtained the seeds from there and then planted, the, planted them only to get a mixture of tall and short, which you can also call as dwarf. So that by crossing a tall plant and a tall plant, we are getting a mixture of tall and short. And therefore, the conclusion is that there are some traits of shortness in this plant. And there are some traits of shortness in this plant. And that's where we are getting the, the dwarf plants. He also said that when you cross the short against the short, Let me see the short plant and then the short plant. In this experiment, he got only short plants. So that is one of the experiments. This is another experiment. <clears throat> so by crossing a short plant and a short plant and getting only short plants, that is to mean the conclusion here was that the short plants were pure breeds. They were pure breeds. So the conclusion in the first case is that tall plants had factors of shortness 
in them. And that's why we are getting a mixture. But in the second experiment, the conclusion by crossing a short and a short plant, it means that the short plants were pure breeds. Were pure breeds. That is, had factors for shortness only. Had factors for shortness only. So, I repeat there. Uh, in the examples of experiments carried out by Mendel, the first one, by crossing the tall and the tall plants, that is the garden pea, uh, the offspring or the products obtained were a mixture of tall and short. And that's an indication that uh, the shortness is, or the shortness was still there, even in the tall plants. So the tall plants had factors of shortness in them. But after crossing the short plants, he only got short offspring or a short generation. And that means that the short plants were pure breeds that had the shortness only. So here, from the two experiments, or from the above experiments, Mendel concluded that some factors now what we are calling the genes are dominant over others some factors are dominant over others e.g tallness dominates over shortness tallness dominates over shortness and therefore shortness can only express itself Shortness can only express itself in the absence of tallness. In the absence of tallness, hence, short plants were pure breeds. Were pure uh, breeds. Now, based on that, uh, we are going to look at uh, some terminologies used in genetics. The terminologies that we came up with from these experiments. One, we have seen that the tallness is dominating over the shortness. That is why uh, the shortness is not expressing itself so we have one a dominant gene this is a gene that expresses itself in the presence of a weaker gene, i.e. suppresses, it suppresses the weaker gene. Then we have the recessive gene is a suppressed gene. 
i.e. cannot express itself in the presence of the dominant gene. So, in conclusion here, the dominant gene, e.g. was the tallness gene, the gene for tallness. And the recessive gene, the suppressed one, is the shortness gene. So we have what we call a dominant gene and a recessive gene.